Why should I bother to reason with other people? Now here's a question that often bothers me when it comes to critical thinking. What's the point of reasoning with other people when it's often easier to use other methods to get what you want? To ask, beg, threaten, cajole, bewilder, manipulate, entice, seduce, distract or deceive? Well, the answer is that in everyday life, there is often no need to offer elaborate reasoning for something. But when something does really matter, being prepared to offer or to seek good reasons is the only way you can be sure you're actually doing it right. Reasoning is never the route to an easy victory, but at its heart lies a commitment to describing things the way they actually are. And this is powerful and important if you want to do more than just get your wishes, if you want to have a clue what's going on. When I engage in reasoning, I'm interested in three things. Offering people good reasons that support a conclusion, or coming up with convincing explanations for why something is the way it is, or being prepared to test both my own and others' arguments and explanations rigorously. Imagine that I walk up to you and I say, you shouldn't stand there. I'm making an assertion. That is, I'm presenting a statement without justification. What do you do in response? Well, quite possibly nothing. Perhaps I'm just being rude or bossy, or I'm completely confused and I think you're someone else. But now, imagine I come up to you and I say, you shouldn't stand there, it's dangerous, there's a hidden driveway just behind you. My assertion has been replaced by an argument. I'm offering an attempt at persuasion through reasoning, and I want you to accept my conclusion. This is much more useful than an assertion because it gives you an informed basis on which you can either accept or reject my conclusion. In this case, you might look behind you and assess the perils of the driveway for yourself. Here's another example. Imagine a friend says to me, I've been offered a great new job, but I can't take it. I shrug, I roll my eyes and I say, well, it's a shame. Fancy a beer? And we move on. We've exchanged assertions and a question about alcohol. And that's about it. And now imagine if instead my friend had said, I've been offered a great new job, but I can't take it. It would mean moving a long way away from my parents. Now this time they've presented me with an argument. The conclusion is that they can't accept a new job, supported by the reasoning that this would mean moving far away from their parents. And so implicitly, they can't do this. In response, I might say, well, is it true you can't move away from your parents? Do you really have to move all that way to accept the job? Are you sure these are good reasons? Do you fancy a beer? So, simply by identifying the reasons for something, we've begun a conversation that's much more likely to be useful compared to an exchange of assertions. We're digging into the causes of things, we're evaluating what's possible and desirable. In a minor way, this is reasoning in action. It doesn't mean an automatic disagreement. It means looking at why things are a certain way and then starting to ask together, well, what actually makes most sense? I recommend reasoning. The moment you start to explain yourself, you'll be astonished at how unreasonable you often are.